two, one, two, three, hello. Hey everybody, this is the Cheshire Cast. And that's how I'm starting it today. Because it's got it. we... I just need something that's a little uplifting. So, hello, I'm Corey. And I'm Trisha. And by your shocked face, you're like, oh, okay, I guess we're starting. Yes, we're starting. It was a, it was a, it was a cold starting. open. Yeah. No, no, that's okay. good. That's a good way to do it. It's like, Send boom. Send live all of a sudden. Send yep, my live so, up in here. So <laughs> and live yeah. from my so, basement, it's Cheshire Cat. <laughs> oh. Hi there. Live from Corey's studio, it's the Cheshire Cast with Corey do, 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 and Trisha. Do, 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 do. Welcome, everybody. I have to copyright it that fast. <laughs> <laughs> that uh, was trademarked. <laughs> I'm feeling a little wacky today, so it'll be good. Um, like so, a quarantine wacky? Yeah, a little bit. A little, little going a little stir crazy. Um, I, I dug out some of my old zombie t-shirts because I used to go on this thing where I would collect zombie t-shirts. So I have like a Rob ton of zombie? zombie t No, zombie. Like like zombie zombie like related the cranberries? No. Zombies. Like alien zombies? Movies. Like World War Z. Yes. Zombie. I watched, you're not supposed uh, to talk yet, Kim. You're supposed to just listen. Nobody's supposed to know Kim, you're, you're here. You're not here yet. Kim. You're not here yet. I'm so uh, don't you know the rules? That's the importance of communication. You know what? You cold opened and we didn't do a sound check. I didn't nope. turn off any of my phones. None Sorry. of my noisemakers are off. I don't know. We didn't, we didn't give the rundown to Kim. I'm not a pro. We, do you even have her, her credentials printed up where you could read them somewhere? Of course I do. Oh, you're a pro. You're a pro. They're, okay, right, so open they're right here the on this you. digital device. I'm going to give you two guesses as to what I watched last night, just to see if you can get it. Totally random. Uh, behind the green door. No. Deep throat. One more guess. No. Uh, right. American oh. Werewolf in London. Oh, yeah? I never saw it before. Well, way to catch up, you know, 35 years later. So that's a long <laughs> zombie line. But I, I thought no, it was that's a werewolves. Campy- I thought it was, it was, that's in the, sh- the same trifecta, like vampires, werewolves, and zombies. Okay. Um, I thought it was a campy comedy. I had no idea that it was really trying to take itself seriously. Um, it was really trying to take itself seriously. Yeah, Josh was like, I Josh was like, when I was little, this was a horror movie. I was like. Was well, you know, the, really? the, the same uh, costume designer did uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller, right? I could totally see that. You could see and that. I also know in the credits of that movie, I also know the graphics, like the effects in that movie were ahead of its time back in the day. I do, I do remember that being noted. But yeah. th- those things don't age so well, but I guess it depends on what kind of age we're talking about. Are we talking about 40 years on that, 30 years on that? Uh, probably close to 40. Wow. Okay. So, now, yeah. all I think about, now all I'm thinking about is, is the Thriller uh, video. Where he's like, I'm, I'm not like other guys. I'm not like other guys. That movie had a great soundtrack. No <laughs> had a lot of Van Morrison. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was really good. Yeah. But that's my quarantine time. I've been watching, just catching up on these old school movies that you just, everybody assumes you've watched, but you, you never have. So. We're watching Westworld. How is it? It's it's I'm really, interesting. I'm really tripping. I'm tripping on the first season. I mean to. How like, how this far is the in are you? Second time. Uh, I'm not as far in this time as I was when I watched it when it originally aired. So probably five episodes in. Oh, I'm but on it's episode. It's really good though. Yeah, I'm on episode three, and I'm like, okay. First season. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got pretty far. That I love sci-fi, but I keep stuttering. I, I need to pick it up. Well, then pick it up. Let's go. I just watched, I just caught up on Survivor. I like that show a lot. I don't like Survivor. I know. You either love it or you hate it. It's the, the, the 20th, 20th season. That's a lot of seasons of yeah, nonsense. Yeah, 20th year. 40th episode. 40th season, 20th year or something like that. You're a know, 40th episode. Well, and then some. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we have a guest with us today. We do. It sounds like we really need her. Well, um, well, it'll probably be another one of those things where I'll start, you know, I'll put myself you on overshare, the table. To, yes. You overshare. Okay. But it's okay. 
So more, uh, more guests, at least. We, we have with us Dr. Kimberly Citron. She's a licensed psychologist with a PhD in clinical psychology, which is uh, pretty impressive. And then there's a subspecialty in forensics. Dr. Citron, she treats children, adolescents, and adults in individual family and uh, group therapy. Right? And uh, you have a small practice here in Cheshire. And then there's a whole bunch of stuff. Well, she specializes in depression and anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. And she has, she's a, she's a Cheshire zone. Yeah. And, and my neighbor. And neighbor and a mom of five. Yep. That should be all the way up there at the top. There's like, there's like first that's... thing, mom of five. Yeah. And you're, then you're PhD. a busy lady, Kim. You guys are sweet. Thank you. Why are we sweet? Just, we just are. That, <laughs> you just are. Is that your official diagnosis? <laughs> that is actually. I'll, t I'll take it. I'll take it. With the with this and, list of credentials, it it's worth something. And. Yes, Her you're husband officially was one of our sweet. first guests, Colby, the glass blower from episode two. Three? Uh, it was it was in the first twelve, I think, that he was. So it's a family affair. Yeah. So now now we've got we've got you and Colby on, at separate times. Um, yes. So you guys are are you uh, are you, you're working right now still? Correct. I am working right now. Colby is always working. You you said I'm a busy woman. He's certainly a busy man since he's typically the one home with the kids. So he's certainly still working and I'm working doing mostly teletherapy. So sessions with people online, similar to a Zoom chat, but in a HIPAA compliant platform. Yeah. Yeah. How's that working out for some of your patients? I think it's working out really well. I think there are definitely more successes than challenges right now. The challenges are obviously mostly technological. Um, so those are pretty easily overcome. Um, the technology connects to some challenges with nonverbal communication, especially if there's a lag or something and you think mm. someone is finished Body language the talk and maybe they're not and you don't have that exactly real-time body language to to signal you in your communication mm -hmm. um but the successes are that this connection is so important right now so i think people are happy to connect in any way that they can and i think having meaningful sessions and meaningful discussions and still making progress with regard to your mental health goes a long way. Just being able to still meet and be together, um, even if not in the manner we're traditionally used to. Hmm. But Which, it's, it, go ahead. That, blend, that blends right into one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on during the quarantine so badly, because you're, you're normally uh, in your regular line of work dealing with people who uh, you, you speak to, you offer therapy, you, you, you help them balance life stress and anxiety and depression. One of the things I need to touch on in this episode, especially for our listeners or people who just might see the title and log in just to get some help, I want to deal specifically with some of the stuff that people might be um, experiencing during the quarantine, during the, the, the panic of the, the, the virus. Because mm -hmm. this in itself lends, lends itself to an entire other mass of, of complica life complications. And sure. not only for adults, but for kids too, I'd love to touch on. So are you seeing the quarantine and being home and the virus affecting your everyday clients? And are you seeing people specifically for that? Have people reached out? Yes. So... I'm seeing most of the clients who I was seeing prior to the shutdown, the vast majority. I would say the only exception to that is 
super small kids who may have had difficult, who really had difficulty engaging in sessions prior, you know, in person because they're young for therapy, even play therapy. You know, those are cases where you really can only engage the parent at this point in teletherapy and providing parenting support in that way. Um, so my regular caseload, I would say by and large, people are experiencing a little bit more anxiety and depression than they did before, kind of an exacerbation of whatever problems existed previously. So that even extends to kiddos with um, attentional problems, ten, that even that tends to be a little bit exacerbated with no or less routine and predictability. Kids on the spectrum may be having a significant amount of difficulty. Boy, I, I, I am noticing that hardcore in this house where Connor and Ian are both like, every once in a while they'll come in and it's like they got to just blow off energy or something, but they'll, they'll come in screaming and yelling about nothing. Just random noises, that whole just like- letting out, just releasing. Yeah. Setting out that energy. <laughs> and it's like, whoa. And then trying to get them to sit and focus sometimes is uh, an insane challenge. But, you know, do what, do what you got to do. So some kids, you see an exacerbation of what may have been there before. Other kids, I mean, I should say, will surprise us. I certainly have kids on my caseload and in my own household who I would have expected to be much more anxious or depressed than they are, and they're doing better than would have been expected. And that's kind of out there in the research literature as well, that for some kids and adults who've experienced anxiety and depression before, some of them actually feel a sense of comfort right now. And I think that's because Previously, they may have engaged in a lot of negative self-talk with regard to their anxiety or depression, things that may have kept them isolated or out of social activities. And now that everyone is kind of forced to be quarantined, they're less self-critical of themselves for not <laughs> engaging in those activities. So just to shift to resilience for a second, because it's really important, a lot of kids and adults some people will be able to be very remarkably resilient through this experience and will do well. And I would, I never want to impart that I think everyone in a population needs mental health treatment or to reach out. But that being said, many, many people are struggling right now. And it, I think on the opposite side of the spectrum, it's important to really normalize that struggle so that those folks aren't engaging in a kind of negative self-talk about their struggles, if that makes sense. Cut themselves some slack. Um, right. I, felt more, I felt more anxiety as we were ramping up to the, the top of the curve. Now that we're kind of leveling off and kind of that that peak has been reached for the first time because that was this is the first time for everybody and that unexpected and I don't like to I don't like surprises I don't like the unknown I feel much more comfortable not that I was completely uncomfortable on the other side because I love being home but my nervousness the anxiety of what's going to happen is tapering off now that we're on this side of it even though we still have no idea what's going to happen right and as we loosen up the quarantine who knows what's going to happen with cases and um my husband who's home has to re-enter the workforce soon so there's that anxiety but um now that we're over that peak i feel a lot calmer i think than i did a few weeks ago i don't know um if you how how well you you can speak on this, Kim, but one of the things I was reading, and it's a it's a serious kind of topic when it comes to uh, the COVID nineteen and staying at home, and uh, you know how patients can get access and so forth. But I was reading an article uh, earlier today. I, I, I apologize, I can't remember where. Um, but they were talking about the. Uh, I mean, obviously, I, I think it's been said that there's a uh, national crisis as it relates to suicide. 
Sure. Um, and this, you know, COVID-19, the experience of being isolated and alone and quarantined. Um, and the unemployment is, rate going up. Right. is kind of a perfect storm. And is. Is, is, is this something that within your community has, you, you've been discussing or uh, can you touch on that a little bit? Of course. I mean, I think that's, you know, you had asked before about current patients. I will say a number of former clients have reached out as well, which I think is, is great. And I think it makes it easier for people who've been in treatment before to reach out to someone that they trusted in the past or an agency that they were served by in the past. Um, so that's sort of where the proactive reaching out begins because you may have a subset of folks who you know need to be checked in on and the rest of it is about networking outreach you know making sure that social service agencies know the providers who are out there we certainly network among ourselves so um like myself and many other wellness professionals belong to a collaborative in Connecticut whereby we're able to ensure that clients that we're not personally able to serve do get served by a colleague. Um, a safety net. You're all banding together and creating a safety net for people who you feel might be at risk. Exactly. And agency is, I know Connecticut Behavioral Health has a waiting list Surprisingly, some clinicians have more flexibility in their schedules doing telehealth because they may have reduced commute times and things of that nature. Um, and so we are also actively calling folks on the waiting list, you know, still accepting new clients. My apologies for the barking dog. I didn't know which uh, house it was coming from because it could okay. have been from any of ours. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I mean, you know, we, we've learned how to deal. Yeah, we've we've learned how to deal with some of the issues related to uh, communicating on this platform. Uh, yes. Um, you know, we've had interviews that turn into, uh, you know, robot speak. We've had people just completely drop off. So it's just, it's the nature of the beast, and it's fine. Um, yeah, um, it's, it's as far as people reaching out, right? They they are comfortable, and then we 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 come into quarantine, we come into unemployment, we come into food scarcity, we come into, um, you know, no paycheck coming in, that will heighten somebody's uh, anxiety, depression, who was in a good space, or even, you know, create a situation where people are reaching out for the first time. But so people are just, people can call and leave a message. You're with Cheshire Behavioral Health? At Connecticut Behavioral Health, they're Connecticut welcome Behavioral to Health. call and leave a message. Um, I am still accepting clients in my private practice, so I could be found on the Psychology Today website. And even beyond myself, um, Psychology Today is a great resource. A lot of the clinicians have pretty lengthy bios, and so we know that the match in a clinical relationship, the match between a client and the clinician, is an even greater determinant of outcome than mm -hmm. the clinician's education um, and, and level of skill. So checking out what a clinician, what their profile looks like kind of begins that process where you to might See if say, you can relate, like a if exactly. you mesh. Exactly, yeah, okay, okay. like, cause they have their, you know, kind of guiding principles of treatment their theoretical orientation. So for instance, I ascribe to cognitive behavioral therapy where we really make progress looking at the relationship between thoughts, feelings, and behaviors and how they may all impact one another um, and lead to different outcomes. So other folks might practice from more of a psychodynamic perspective, looking at unconscious processes and, and so on and so forth. Um, so by beginning those to read those profiles, you should feel some sense of connection with particular providers. So I would look at the connection you feel with what they've written about themselves. And then of course, looking at things like your insurance, whether it matches up with the insurances that they accept. 
and thinking a little bit, I mean, you want to think about geography for the future, because even though industry-wide folks are now doing telehealth, um, you know, if you form a relationship, even if it's three months down the road, you probably don't want to be driving somewhere that's unmanageable for you in order to see that same clinician. But if, if you're reaching out for yourself is one thing, but we're all home and we're spending a lot of time with our loved ones and we're seeing different sides of our kids, different sides of our spouses that we haven't seen maybe in the entire time we've known them. You know, who I've never seen my kids not leave the house for a month. If you're worried about somebody in your family and you see behavior um, that worries you, call somebody? Of course. If you're concerned, always err on the side of calling. I will and say what's concerning that... behavior? What is concerning behavior? Well, like, what I think what I, what I want to know first is, Kim, has my wife called you at all? <laughs> not for that reason, not to express concern. Just, just um, making sure because, yes. you know. And no. right down the road, that's for probably herself. the first thought you would have. Uh, Favorite people. I, I'd love a call from Jen for any reason. Um, but not, no, she has not called to express <laughs> But you couldn't tell me anyway, you know, patient, doctor, that confidential. That is true. And I will say that if she did call to express concern, um, and different clinicians have different views on this, but in terms of whether they will bend these kind of ethical rules mm. an adult should really be calling and seeking treatment for themselves um if a spouse called me and said their spouse was extremely distraught but was having say thoughts of harming themselves i would certainly say you're welcome to schedule that appointment um but of course you need your partner to willingly you know therapy is something that we have to willingly enter into Sure. Um, so adults even if it's short term for this period of time, this because it's so uncertain and there's so such high anxiety and you know the uh, but they're also saying statistics of domestic violence are up and because of unemployment and money yes. problems. I, I mean it's it's a whole slew of of emotional trauma going on right now. So when you mentioned before, Trisha, all of the other stresses that families are under as related to unemployment, food insecurity, finances, and so on, actually, that's what was going on in the back of my head is, and every one of those things can also cause family conflict, um, which then obviously has an impact on each individual family member, as well as the the system as a whole. Hmm. So certainly we want people to reach out if they're starting to experience those difficulties as well. I mean, just like the quarantine can exacerbate mental health issues like anxiety or depression or thoughts of self-harm that may have existed before, it will also exacerbate or reflect any family conflict issues that may have existed before, but maybe these Things happened in very small doses because people were at work all the time and they had limited exposure to one another. And maybe there was minor financial stress before, but maybe now there's major financial stress and you cannot get away from each other. So, like if I hear him chew one more time, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you chew so loud? Yes, that is right. Well, Je you know, it's funny. Um, Jen and I are actually getting along better than we have um, at times in the past. Just uh, reconnecting. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're we're giving each other, uh, you know, our fair amount of space. You know, she's like she watches shows, and I do. You know, one of the things I've been doing to try to keep my mind uh, occupied is I do these nightly Zoom meetings that I. I post on my Facebook and uh, my friends will join in and we'll have like a little party. Uh, I love that you're doing that. We even, we even play sound effects now. So it sounds like we're in a crowd of people. <laughs> so it sounds more like we're at a bar. Sure. Um, but like the candle after. Yeah, so exactly. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've found just for my own mental well-being. I mean, it's great to see Jen and the kids, 
but I'm, I'm an extrovert. I like to socialize and just being able to talk. Um, I don't want to say without fear of consequence, but you know, when you're talking to your friends, it's different than when you're talking to your wife, you know, I can, I can get away with a lot with my friends and you know, if, and I know if my friends are logged in, they're in the mood for that. Whereas uh, Jen's not always in the mood for my jokes, <laughs> sure. if, if you will. So I can't, re- I can't relate to that at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, Trish is never in the mood for my jokes, but that's a whole nother thing. And that's, you know, part of what makes the show fun. But, you know, uh, um, I like the funny ones. So Who's dog is this time? That, that oh, was good. Was, I didn't know. I didn't know if it was Murphy or not. No, Murphy. Murphy doesn't usually bark inside unless there's somebody at the door, or Shiny Connor says starts hello harassing to him. every passerby. So that's Hi, what we're hearing. Yeah. I just heard something like fall in my house, and I have my headphones on noise canceling, so it had to be something big. Uh, I'll have to see what it what Do it you is need to go here. run and check? <laughs> no, there's an adult up there, so I'm good. Are you sure maybe it wasn't the adult <laughs> falling over? No, then. You know, the kids would ignore that and not come and get me, but... They he'll, would. He'll be, fu- he'll be well, fine. W- I've told you about that. Like, I've He's laid on the grass. Years. I've laid on the grass in the front yard just to see how long it would take Jen or somebody to come and check. Oh, my goodness. Is that when you pretended to fall off the ladder? I've done all those things. I've pretended to have a heart attack. I've pretended to I fall think off you're the just ladder. I really screaming out for attention, Corey. I think that's what it all boils down to. Let's ask the professional. If you pretend that you're dead and get upset when nobody comes <laughs> to your rescue, is that a, is that a call for attention? Well, I would say a, a, something <laughs> is needed. There, there's definitely a need. He's that's still angry unmet. about it, too. So. <laughs> well, I mean... What if I really did have a heart attack and right. my only I'm chance were survival? A, a it, was, fear it was just of a dry run. There. It was yeah. just practice. It was a yeah. drill. This I is think it, dad I, had a heart attack drill. <laughs> I think it's twofold, Trisha. I think she's right. I think part of it is fear based, like nobody's gonna be there to save me. And then the other one is like, yeah, there's a desperate need for attention in some level. No, maybe not desperate. I think desperate well, too hard. I, I hope by them ignoring you, it doesn't make that feeling worse. You almost set yourself up for failure in that one. Did um, they event- you didn't freeze to the ground, right? Somebody eventually came and said, are you breathing? Yeah, I think it was Colby. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that's the dog. Funny, Is I my neighbor just, okay? <laughs> I was just thinking Colby is very much the opposite. So like many years ago you know, he's a glass blower. So he has these like thousand pounds oxygen tanks. Uh-huh. And way before you guys knew Colby, he once moved one of these like himself alone. And I guess he was rotating it, but they're so heavy that it like lifted him off the ground. And then when he landed back on his feet, it fell on his foot. And he called me from his studio that day and was like, you need to come pick me up. I think I may have hurt my foot a little bit. And like his foot was broken in seven places. <laughs> like this thing shattered. He's, he's calm. Foot. And his he really, he's very slow. calm. And he just yeah. made it sound like it was like nothing. Like they were just like shopping, not letting him drive coffee. home. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> so oh, he should have made it sound more urgent. He should, I mean, he. But that's how we balance each other out. And I think okay. that is also key. Like, I will say, we're very fortunate. We seem to be getting along better right now than perhaps in other times of stress. <laughs> and I think that's all about being kind of, it sounds corny, but taking like a team approach to it, not seeing yourselves as in competition for resources, but as sharing your physical and emotional resources to reach a common goal. So like, if we're not both sane and relaxed and getting time to regroup, then neither of us will be sane or relaxed or getting time to regroup because the other one will be a raging lunatic and will ensure that no one is sane or relaxed. So it's like a joint effort to support one another in finding ways to stay sane and relaxed as much as possible 
Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it can certainly be uh, a daunting task for uh, couples living together, especially like where, where Trisha said. I mean, if you if if you are somebody who is used to working out of the office eight, 10 hours a day, every day, that adjustment to working at home is, man, that's, it's gotta be in, insanely difficult, you know, and I should ask my brother about it a little bit because he, he, you know, he commutes to New York city every day. So his day is easily 10 hours, if not 14, you know, and now he's trying to work at home and he's got twin uh the twins are what four gonna be five uh he's got the the seven year old in the house and then uh his his wife his wife's uh two kids and they're you know in their late teens and the other one's in his early twenties. There's two dogs in the house. Like I'm just thinking everybody's all under one roof at the same and you're, time and they're all in the same area it's not like he has an area where he, it's his office like i'm fortunate i have this room so i can be in here all day and nobody knows the better but and and he his case can't be unusual in situations like that people's stress must spike oh god i'm just sure. stressing imagine. out thinking about it and everybody is trying whether you're a teacher whether you're in a profession like mine where you're able to meet with clients throughout the day, um, whether you're an attorney, whatever it is that you do, if you are now working from home using some sort of online platform, you're trying to do your typical job well. Some people are now given jobs they wouldn't normally have to accommodate the need to work from home. Um, mm -hmm. So certain people in all different industries are now balanced at having to do their job well as they did before and then learn this whole other manner so to do their job, like to accomplish what they're doing. So, you know, I can only kind of see things through my own lens and I, I work with a lot of teachers. So the lens of teachers as well, but like, juggling having your own children and home, you know, teaching them at home while you're working, managing the technology, managing things like dogs barking or children interrupting, um, things like that. Um, Boy, I didn't and, even think about single parents. And <laughs> single parents who are doing all of this Oof. by themselves. Even single parent, well, first just to cover this point, because Colby actually tells me I have a tendency to not finish a thought in a way that provides closure. Husbands. So what I, what I was reading about is this, what we call cognitive dissonance, which is okay. when your, your mind and body are kind of receiving two different messages that they have to reconcile with one another. So for instance, we're all using these platforms to be together while we're apart. And then we end up simultaneously processing the fact that we're still together. So it's very nice to see both of your faces. You're two of my favorite people. And I love that we're all together right now. But the fact that I'm looking at you through these screens rather than, you know, Trisha in my living room when you're picking up your son from a play date or Corey outside when I'm walking down the block is a constant reminder that yep. we're actually not together. We're together through this platform, which is nice, but in every moment of this, I am reminded that we're apart and we have to be apart. Um, so this- and why we're apart and exactly. when will we not be apart and how long, yeah. Cognitive dissonance comes in, compartmentalizing comes in very handy in times like this. Exactly. So think of all the things your mind and body are doing at the same time when you're parenting, working, you know, trying to implement some form of self-care to stay well. This is all overwhelming and we're, we're only human beings, you know, we're only meant to handle so much at once. So it's helpful to approach it kind of one thing at a time. Corey, what I was going to say about single moms when you said that was um, 
you know, even something as simple as going to the grocery store mm -hmm. and, you know, parents who don't have another parent at home so they can safely leave their child at home with another parent, you know, things like that. Um, being fearful if you have to bring your child in and, you know, not expose them or exactly. be judged or so i mean oh you mean every, for fear that somebody's gonna post something negative about you on the forum and then everybody's gonna like so let's talk like, about social media <clears throat> in the time of quarantine yeah it's, i mean it's, it's huge ugh. it's 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 huge it's and it's it's huge on both ends of the spectrum mm -hmm. it's incredibly connecting and helpful and it's incredibly critical and judgmental all at the, almost yeah. in the same span of a well, second. Well, look how many people have fallen for the, the, the uh, 5G conspiracies. I mean, there's so many people I, all... I can't talk about conspiracies. They have me so enraged right now. Yeah, but, and then, you know... You, incredible. You've been, then on our local forum, you've got somebody who saw a group of teenagers and they didn't like that, so they post about it and everybody's... But then there's the good too. Of course, there's always there's good. There's so much... I mean, so much good. There's, everybody just needs a to meal train. There's so much good on yeah, social you need media to look right at the now. Good. You need to try really hard to look at the good things and the funny things. Like I spent, I spent like an hour during lunch today looking at silly TikTok videos just to stop thinking about anything else. So I'm watching people dance to this stupid, uh, the Carol, uh, what's her name from the tiger king, tiger king. Mm -hmm. Carol Baskin. Yeah, Carol Baskin. <laughs> it's just so, who, who fed her husband to the tigers. <laughs> yeah, it, but have you seen the dance? No. no. There's a dance that goes along with it, and there's hundreds of these TikTok videos where there people are doing the dance. That go, and I'll have to look I, it up. I, maybe I'm we'll just, have to do it. Yeah. No. But I'm just. We'll do well, all right, TikTok. maybe maybe we'll do it. But I'm, I don't I'm, have TikTok. I don't know. I, I skipped. I don't. It. I, I don't, don't TikTok yet either. I'm you, not. I've never you, had Snapchat either. You I just I go on that YouTube and you just you just write in you know Carol Baskin TikTok dance, um, and it's it's all over. I'll do and that it's, every and time it's hilarious. there's a press conference. Yeah. That's what I'll use that time for. But that's how I'm. Be much uh, more informative. Yeah, that's how I'm breaking up the anxiety the of, and the monotony of some of this bs information that, overload too right Corey? i mean uh, if you wanted to you could spend 24 hours a day processing unique information on the virus like the articles the the reddits the you could honestly you could od on information it's it, it's all it's everything is accessible to you without leaving your house at this point information wise and you can really get it can get obsessive yeah but you have think, to you have to sit and watch tiktok you have to watch youtube you have to you know watch very Tiger much King. so yes we definitely want to limit our intake of information to trust it's finding that balance and limited balance. times yep because some people are comfortable with more information that actually brings a level of calmness and other yeah. people are overwhelmed with that and finding where that balance is and as soon as you hit it be like that's enough if i read one more thing i i'll i'm gonna live in my shower so it's, <laughs> it's, finding that that level of comfort has been it's been a challenge for me anyway in this in this day and age of technology and, and information super highways and conspiracy theories and social media and uh, every newspaper outlet from coast to coast, from every country you can read, Al Jazeera, you can read anything you want. And I have, I have family in, in different countries and I want to know what's going on there. It's just at a certain point, you just have to be like, I'm going to go bake. I'm going to bake and then I'm going to eat, you know, what I baked and just, <laughs> have to and just relax. <laughs> Yes. Not going to feel guilty and I'm going to get a piece before the kids eat it all. And yeah, it's, I mean, it's finding that, that, that space of, of calmness. I want to turn the spotlight on the, the first responders, which is you fall under that category, Kim and uh, Dr. Citron. Citron? Citron, right? Yes. I want to put an extra N in there. 
Um, Everybody always does. C i n t r no citron like like citrus like the fruit yes the fruit um, like the or, flavor or the of vodka. absolute <laughs> yeah right I was thinking that yeah. that's yeah. right um, how are absolute you absolute citron you are it, you have your regular life going on with your kids and your family and your quarantine and you are your balance that you're trying to find but then during your work time you are absorbing in a healthy therapist way, you are helping people work through their anxieties and their depression. How, as a, as a service provider, do you not take that on and have it weigh you further down in this type of um, environment, you know, where, where everything is kind of anxiety producing? Like, how are you guys shielding yourself? How are you compartmentalizing it? Hmm. What are I mean, your secrets? I think a big part of that comes from, you know, loving my job to begin with and feeling privileged to have a skill set that allows me to help people ever, let alone in a time like this. So first, it kind of acknowledging that that is a privilege, but then like anything else, balancing that with um, you have to acknowledge and validate the negative feelings as well. So exactly what you just said, Trisha, kind of mindfully acknowledging that each day that this is a very difficult time and we will be holding a lot of emotions for others and guiding them through that and knowing that that needs to be balanced out by finding our own means of self-care and healthy outlets and relying on your own support system. So, I mean, I get, I'm blessed with a husband who I love and know would do anything to support me and our kids and who also knows how important my work is to me and wants to enable me and empower me to be able to do that. So whether that's by, you know, he's great at having a lunch ready for me between sessions or, you know, buying my favorite Greek yogurt bars when he goes to the store. Um, not as great at stopping the dog from barking during sessions as can happen from time. Well, we'll make a list. That's yeah. one tiny little check. Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, we're, ignoring, we're ignoring Shiny. I don't hear Shiny at all. And, you know, I have <laughs> I, I hear a yeah. bunch <laughs> of kids who let me, for me, like I am wicked with building blocks and find it very therapeutic and enjoyable. I, I love craft projects during her breaks from school, which I would recommend, you know, I have a first grader and, you know, my, my older boys who are in eighth and fifth grade were, are fairly independent with their work. I will say homeschooling a first grader is rough. Like they need imagine. constant right. feedback and scaffolding assist, and exactly. attention and assistance even even tasks. just for the computer not not necessarily even with the work which yes but also with finding the work yes absolutely oh, that's, so that's intensive for her and she's a, a relatively active child um you know one of the best things i did the first week of quarantine was during every break from or the first week of homeschooling during every break from her academic work, which we were taking breaks every 15, 20 minutes. It was a miracle if we could work for 20 minutes straight. Um, they don't work for 20 minutes straight in school, so. True. Nope. So I am fairly um, uncoordinated physically. I'm very clumsy. <laughs> and that's just not a strength of mine. And I, as a child, was never able to accomplish doing a true cartwheel. This was not something I was able to do. I'll admit that that shortcoming that I always, you know, this was a big hit to my self-esteem as a teenage cheerleader. Um, 
But during the first week of homeschooling, I was somehow able to teach my seven-year-old to do a, a cartwheel. By the end of all the breaks from all the academic work, you know, all week long, at the end of the week, she was able to do a pretty killer cartwheel. So, you know, finding the joy, finding those things, whatever they may be for people. A little moment. Is, you know, shiny as much I thought as you were going to say you could do a cartwheel. I was going to that. I mean, it's impressive that the seven-year-old got it. <laughs> But if you were out there down the cul-de-sac doing cartwheels, I, I think, and then do one without spilling your wine, and you've got a show. I think, I, think you, I think you need to practice doing your cartwheel. I can do a cartwheel. I'll try that. Can you? The last time I, I did a cartwheel, I was on a beach, and I got so dizzy, I promised myself I'm never going to do it again. Because mm. yeah. I almost hurt myself. So no, no, I couldn't do it, but next best thing, you know, just like there can be vicarious trauma from doing this work, which is kind of what you were referring to, Trisha. There's also vicarious accomplishments. Um, vicarious success. Absolutely. Exactly. So, and for clinicians, I know who don't have kids, you know, everyone finds their joy somewhere. So it might be baking or cooking or our furry children are extremely therapeutic, you know, whatever type of critter or animal you may have. Um, being in nature for some people is very grounding. Um, so, but of course doing so in a socially distant responsible right. way. In a responsible way. I think also what's unique for you guys uh, for service providers, mental health service providers right now, is you are sharing the trauma with your, with your clients, with your patients. Uh, I, could, I could see somebody coming to you and you can help them through a trauma, having not experienced it yourself, whether it was a childhood trauma or something they experienced with their relationship. But with this particular issue that people are coming to you with, you're living through it as well. So I could see that heightening an anxiety like if they point out something that you didn't see you're like oh yeah i didn't even think about that because you you're sharing it you're also living through the same the same uncertainty and the same you know trials and tribulations it's it's a unique situation it is but i'm glad that you found a, an outlet a safe a safe place for yourself too because that's important sure and um I think it's just really important that everyone have someone that they can rely on for support. And it's so important to realize that you're not alone. So I mentioned like I belong to a wellness professionals collaborative. And so I'm able to see that many of the struggles I might be experiencing as a clinician during this time, my colleagues are experiencing as well. I have a great peer support network of the clinicians who I work with at Connecticut Behavioral Health um, and clinicians who I've worked with in the past where we're able to kind of normalize the struggles for one another, um, which whether it's for us as clinicians or as I said, even as human beings, you know, I, I love seeing the accomplishments. Like I, painted my whole house today, or I built that fence I was meaning to build, or finished my garden. I, what was that? Finished my garden. Exactly. Finished my garden. Um, I love that. And I think those things are great. I discovered the joy of leaf blowing um, last weekend. And really, that's something I would normally be more than happy to have Colby <laughs> do. He's always done it. And I mean, he was so happy that he let me try the leaf blower because he did not see it again for the rest of the weekend. And I was like obsessed, like leaf blowing is so analogous to life right now. And I, <laughs> if, every, if everything cleaned up that easy, right? Exactly, right. I, just, mul I mulch it. I, I make it small, tiny little pieces and let it integrate with the dirt. That's what I do. Very I, nice. I let it ride. That's <laughs> right. So um, what were you going to say? Well, I was, I was just going to say uh, in, in the few minutes we have left, is there any, any critical points that you want to share? Any, any must do's for uh, me or Trisha or the uh, listener base? Any advice, parting words? I mean, my best advice is just to, you know, 
be non-judgmental of yourselves. Try whatever feelings you're experiencing. There are definitely other people out there who are experiencing the same breadth and depth of emotions. You're mm. not alone. Rely on those around you for support, but don't be afraid to reach out to professionals for support. And especially, especially, especially if there are any safety concerns, if, if anyone is having thoughts about hurting themselves or someone else, or if anyone is just in too much emotional pain to bear right now, please don't try to do it alone. Like there are people out there, myself and many amazing colleagues in our community mm -hmm. who are ready to help you and you can be connected with services. This is temporary. The COVID-19 is temporary. We might not have an exact timeline on it, but this time in our lives will pass. And I- This too shall pass. Exactly. We, we, we hope. Don't, we do. We wah, hope. Wah. And we don't want anyone to face unnecessary enduring consequences because of the, the negative impact of this. Um, things will turn around and sometimes we need help to turn things around and help is out there. And keep, this is a, positive this is a big TikTok. situation. Yes. This is a big situation what we're living through. This isn't the normal stress or no, this, the normal This is bumps. new for a lot of people. This is, this is different. It's new this for is everybody. Generational. Sure. Yep. This is this is you know a century. So cut yourself some slack. Don't uh don't evaluate yourself by other people's activities, habits, and successes. And, and, and also, I find myself sometimes feeling guilty for um, having an easy time of it. That's also another end of this. I'm having, I'm having a very easy time of it with my, my, my kids and my husband. And, and then I feel bad for the people that I know are truly struggling. So it's, it's a tough it's a tough situation to uh to get through but we we will get through it together we will. as a society yeah. we've always been successful and people at that. who are listening to this podcast this that's one way to do it you you find things that are entertaining you spend your time keeping your mind occupied elsewhere this is this could fall into a category of entertainment and self-help sure. and uh you know, we will, we will see an end to this eventually. We will overcome. So I'm we looking will. forward to seeing everybody's Carol Baskin TikTok videos. <laughs> Send them to us. Uh, Kim, Dr. Citron. Uh, thank you for indulging thank, us. Yes, thank, thank you, you for Thank you guys so here. much for having me and for doing it's this. Important. Like, it's important. Now more than ever. I mean, I, I've always loved that you guys do this, but it just, it really brings such a sense of community. And I, I really think that that will contribute to people's well-being right now because it's just another way in which you connect the whole Cheshire community so thank you for that well thank you for the compliment and you are welcome we enjoy it we do thanks guys so uh Trisha Corey thanks for another night on on zoom for the podcast we uh we're cranking them out so shows uh Shows coming out like three, four days We're apart. We're doing like our regular episodes, but then we've mm -hmm. also added in these quarantine series, which I think have been so awesome. People in the community that are reaching out, like Correct. are able to, to give us some of their professional guidance. And who do we have on tomorrow? Pops Pizza. That's going to be fun. Yep. So, and as always, all our lovely listeners out there, if you like what you hear, give us a five-star review. Uh, I see the number climbing. It's awesome to see that on uh, on uh, iTunes, and uh, we've got a Podbean and and uh, Spotify and uh, Libsyn. Well, Libsyn, yeah, was, you know, iHeart I Media, iHeart Radio. All, we're out on all all the the best um, podcast platforms. Just search for. Uh, the Cheshire uh, podcast, uh, the pod, uh, pod being in, uh, uh, what are those called? Parentheses. 
That's parentheses. Okay. Yeah. So. It's parenthetical, the pod. Mm-hmm. Because we're the cast. Um, Court, we are. Yeah, we are. What? And Trisha. So our, Court, what? you've been recording all of these. When are we putting, when are you putting up the videos? I'm not, I'm trying to figure out how to edit video. I know. How do you do that? That's, That's going to be fun. Well, that's something that the the listeners can look forward to. You can become viewers eventually. Yeah, I, I don't have the best video editing skills. How do you? So. How would you edit this? The same way you would edit. Well, the, you put it in a video. Well, we could talk about that offline, but you put it in a program, and it gives you the stuff to cut it and paste it. And Jonah has like wicked video editing software, and is super good at it. Oh yeah. Well, maybe I'll talk to him. He's got time on his hands. He certainly does. True. I mean, I you wouldn't know it, my kids. They are so, uh, they play like five video games each, and I make them go outside to exercise, and I make them come out and eat. And other than that, they are totally content. I have to like make sure they're doing their schoolwork, and mm -hmm. I, they're they they should not be busy, but they are. Well, you know, surprisingly, if I could just say before we go, who's most discombobulated through all of this of all of my children which would be so counterintuitive since she, i would not have thought that she experienced much change but zoe who's four is like losing her mind a little bit and she i realize why they have all invaded her space so zoe has she just turned four she hasn't started pre-k yet she's home with dad the other kids come home in the summer, but that's when they can go do all sorts of amazing stuff, like go to the pool and on hikes and so on and so forth. But now they've just like invaded her space and she's like, what are they all doing here? And make them go away. <laughs> they've, they've ruined her life. <laughs> they have. She's a little out of sorts. She, the baby, she was able to take, but the big kids, she is like, "This Over is my that. space. Why are you in it? Go back to school." Who do you think you are? <laughs> That's Stop right. touching my stuff. That's right. <laughs> and now I can no longer touch your stuff while you're in school because you're not going anywhere. Oh, she has more. There's more eyes on her. Yeah. Yep. Everybody's so watching check on everybody, doing. even those who you think, even those who you least expect to be struggling. You know, anyone can struggle. And well, with mine, they have good weeks and bad weeks. Yeah. Well, I thank everybody thank tonight. Thank you. And we'll see you all next time on the Cheshire Cast. Goodbye. Well, bye, bye. See you soon. Bye. bye, guys. bye.